Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Somebody know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you on the Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, it was learned that we will be partaking in a feast in the next day, in which we will be formally introduced to the tribe. So I'm very excited for this. I cannot wait to see how this turns out. Um, I hope we meet uh, some new and interesting characters. But anyway, guys, let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes. Sit back and enjoy. Grab a cold drink, something to eat. And let's just jump right into it. Alarm Chin, you are up. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> all right. In all fairness, I'm terribly excited about tomorrow. Also a bit daunted. Hmm. <laughs> You'll do just fine. He dismisses me with a paw. I'm glad at least one of us is confident. Verissa did spook me a little. Hmm. <laughs> she loves to overcomplicate things. I teased her about it a lot when we were younger. Oh? I inquire, finally tapping to the bottom of my mug. I used to joke that she was born gray, but turned white due to her constant worrying. That's mean. I chuckle, imagining the female's frustration. Anyway, I'm sure you'll woo everyone, just as you wooed me. It's hard to woo anyone with your mouth shut. I almost spit out my brew. Wait, when did I woo you? In your dreams! The only one doing the wooing here is so far as you. That's right, Mr. John Woo. The wolf smirks, cruelly enjoying that his jab has landed. <laughs> oh, woo. <laughs> Stop this. Oh, my God. He made a cute imitation of a howl, and I just made my imagination run wild. Aww. Do it again, but this time for real. I demand, tapping my hands on the table. What? Give us a proper one. How like true wolves do. I request cruelly put him on the spot, and he fidgets uncomfortably. I... I shouldn't. Why not? Yeah, someone might hear. So, don't tell me you're not allowed to howl. Of course not! The male scoffs at me, but his expression quickly turns back into a troubled one. But they aren't meaningless sounds. They're messages. You have to have something to howl about. Oh. I mumble, not sure if I understand him correctly. Are you telling me you have nothing you'd like to howl about? I've got plenty. He scoffs again, this time with a determined look, and I decide to push my luck. Then I'd love to hear you howl. Hmm. The wolf hesitates, and I'm almost inclined to drop it, not wanting to force him. Not wanting to force him, but a flicker of his tail indicates that he actually wants to do it. Please? Ugh, fine. You're such a pup. He shakes his head and takes a deep inhale. I rest my elbows on the table, supporting my chin in my palms as I watch his torso expand. Rannick tilts his head back, with his nose pointing at the ceiling. His muzzle puckers and a melodic sound resonates from deep within his throat. A sentimental feeling washes over me when I hear his voice reverberate across the glass windows. The howl echoes throughout the kitchen in a high-pitched tone, filled with joy and happiness. He's sending a message of comfort and bliss to everyone around him, and I swear I can hear it say, I'm the luckiest wolf alive! I'm extremely touched, and I can feel the hair on the back of my neck rise up in response. I'm just sitting here looking at him starry-eyed. <laughs> wow, that was utterly beautiful. I exhale, giving him a round of applause. Seeing he took my breath away, the wolf smiles awkwardly. Well, it was a pretty good day. He nods, and I raise my mug. <laughs> I'll drink to that. We clink our tankards and cheer. We continue chatting and drinking for a while longer, both teasing each other to draw another fit of laughter. Eventually, we get drowsy enough to head off to bed. If Rannick is to have any chance out the hunt, he needs to be rested. I puff up the pillows as he drops onto the mattress, patting a spot beside him. I'm quite surprised by the gesture, but I smile and oblige. The wolf quickly pulls me into a tight embrace, snuggling, snuggling me deep into his chest. I think he's doing it because he's quite tipsy, but I don't mind. I grew attached to this intimacy, and if, I drink, and if a drink allows him more freedom of expression, who am I to judge? I drift off in my furry cradle within moments, hoping nothing will disturb my sleep. The dream I have is nothing short of a nightmare. Once again, I'm suspended in darkness, my body fading into oblivion. Why is this happening to me? My mind is bombarded by a maddening voice, thousands of whispers speaking as one. I've heard them before. Fail! 
I struggle at the first attack, almost breaking, but the choice of the word of the word steals my resolve. I won't fail. I won't give you the satisfaction. Oh, hope. I want to scream in agony. Without a body, I am forced to endure this silence. Why do you keep torturing me like this? Fade. Again, I feel myself slipping away at the command. Each whisper feels like a seed of madness planted inside my mind. The entity toys with me, and I cannot do anything but to surrender myself. I fade, just as told to do so, before any more agony pushes me beyond the breaking point. I wake up with a rattled breath, looking around the room in a panic. It's midday and I'm alone, with no sign of the wolf, his side of the bed already cool. Renick has clearly left on his morning hunt, and I feel guilty for not seeing him off. This guilt doesn't last long, however, as I realize why I overslept. I was stuck in the void again, and with this realization, everything comes back to me like a tidal wave. I've been there before, twice in fact, each time bombarded by a maddening voice. I think I was suppressing those dreams, as if subconsciously trying to push them out of existence, but something changed tonight. I was challenged, an entity demanded my submission. All hope fades, the voice said to my refusal, how much I remember. As ominous as it seems, I'm still not quite sure if it isn't just all in my head. However, something about tonight made it feel very much real. I'm not sure if I'm getting used to the sensation of, of complete abandon or the agony, but I can recollect glimpses of that horrible place. If one can even call it a place, it feels more like a state of being devoid of everything, tethering on the edge of nothingness. Just the sheer thought of it fills me with great unease. Losing my memory and being stranded in this strange world is one thing, but hearing voices is another. For a moment, I consider if I should actually talk to either Varissa or Rannick about this, but then again, hearing voices would probably be as insane to them as it sounds. It's enough that they view me as strange and a liability, but the last thing I want is for them to consider me mad. What's going on over here? Okay. I take a deep breath and sit up, stretching my hands back to support myself. I need to relax and clear my mind, otherwise I might have another weird episode. As I recline to take a second long inhale, my hand touches something odd on Rannick's pillow. Ooh. My gaze drifts down and I can see a single dandelion lying where his head should, be, should have been. I pick up the flower, touching its delicate bud, unable to contain a smile. I almost burst into tears but managed to, resign, to rein myself in. With this one gesture, Rannick has banished all the turmoil that occupied my mind. The yellow flower. I contend with the gray skies that hung above my head. Voices and night terrors will have to wait. Today is too important to allow any of, the, any of my mental issues to spill over. I need to keep myself alert and sharp, without any nonsensical distractions. Yet again, the wolf has proven to be the anchor to ground me. I jump off the bed and rush towards the kitchen, wondering if there's any water there for me to wash up. I bring the flour with me, placing it on the table. There, I find a small bread roll next to a wooden bowl filled with what was left of our, from our stew. I quickly notice the flint and the fire striker lying next to it, almost as if Rannick was suggesting I heat up my food when I wake up. Again, I feel choked up. No one has ever been this considerate towards me. Damn it, Wolf! You make it really hard not to fall for you. I reluctantly gaze towards the hearth and realize that attempting another fire would only fuel my frustration. Why ruin such a nice day with my, in with my inabilities? Instead, I just sit down and dig in. Even at room temperature, the stew is utterly delicious, and the crusty, flesh freshly baked bun is just pushing the meal over the edge. I sigh with satisfaction, licking the bowl clean. My appetite is slowly increasing, and I take it as a good sign. I approach the cupboard to find fresh water left for me along with a, bear, along with a birch twig, when I thought of everything. I quickly wash up, wanting to look my best if we were to attend the feast. I take great care in cleaning my body with ash, as I did before. I even wash my hair, as it again began to clump together in unattractive streaks. Once my teeth are cleaned and I feel fresh and ready, I simply sit back down at the table, waiting for the wolf. The time passes by with me having very little to do other than attempting another boring read. Nah, I'd rather doze off than do that. I grab the dandelion and return to the bed, resting my head on the pillows and toying idly with the flower. Such a little thing, a weed, a weed as he called it, yet it stilled my resolve against the shadows. I haven't felt this calm since I woke up this, in this room for the first time. I almost feel as if nothing could break me now, but I'd rather not press my luck with a protracted, with a protracted solitude. Thankfully, it doesn't take too long before the door opens and my wolf enters the cabin. I rush to the kitchen to greet him. So, how did it go? Who got the boar? I ask with a wide smile on my face. 
We almost had it, but Vool came out of fucking nowhere. The wolf huffs in annoyance, plopping onto a chair. I bring him a tanker filled with ale, knowing full well how he likes to unwind with it. <laughs> oh, sorry, but hey, at least it wasn't Tano, eh? I think even Tano getting the kill would have been better. Less show-offy. What did Vool do? I scoff in amusement. Crazy bastard wrestled the beast bear paw, and suddenly blood and guts flew everywhere. Rennet continues his rant, taking an idle sip while I sit down next to him. Both packs stood there almost certain the boar gutted him, but it was the other way around. He finished him off with a dagger. The very same he used on you. He sneers, clearly conveying it was almost a personal insult to him. I guess if I were to take on a boar, a dagger would not be my weapon of choice, but in all fairness, Vool doesn't seem like he needs a weapon at all. An image of him eviscerating a huge boar with that knife makes me cringe a little as I rub my and I rub my dressing. I guess he really was being gentle with me. But at least you seem to have had a better day. First time I didn't catch you crying. Well, I had a little help. I sway the dandelion in my hand. Hm. How did that get in here? He feigns surprise, but his tail swing betrays him. I guess we'll never know. I wink at him, placing the flower down. The wolf blushes, looking to the side and taking a nervous gulp of his drink. I almost want to laugh at how unaccustomed he is with others playing this game. I guess he just thought he would always be the solo player. Rennick takes another long swig and puts the tankard back on the table. It's almost as if he was looking for courage at the bottom of his mug. Right. We better head out. The feast will start soon. Just stick to me and avoid others as much as possible. I nod and we get ready to part when a sudden thought occurs to me. I'm almost naked. I really don't feel comfortable going out just in my loincloth. I mutter, looking around for anything I can put on. Well, don't wrap yourself in bedding. That makes you look like a savage. I grimace. Where I come from, walking around your underwear is definitely inappropriate. Here, just put that on. That'll cover you nicely. He passes me one of his spare cloaks. From my little kitties is meowing. I don't know what he wants. He's got food and water. I gave him plenty of attention. <laughs> Silly boy, you stop that. I take a discreet sniff, feeling his scent all over it. It's going to be quite a comfort. It's going to be quite a comfort at the feast, but not really what I had in mind. I put it on, closing the clip on my right side, and look down at myself with an immediate frown. I look like a fucking hobbit. <laughs> I mutter, twinkling my toes. Oh, oh, what? You know, a hobbit from the Lords of the Rang. I just wave him away, not. To not keen to elaborate. I really need to get some clothes. I'm showing too much skin. I look to him with a cheeky smile, not really meaning to imply anything, but rather force him to do something about my predicament. Or is this how you like your wards? The wolf throws me a surprised gaze, almost choking at the remark. Don't be absurd! He protests in panic. I'll try to figure something out tomorrow, but there's no time for that today. Well, I'll hold you to it. I pick up the dandelion and put it in the pen of my cloak. Well, what are you doing? I'm taking it with me. It's a good charm. He seems rather troubled by the idea. I mean, not every day a random flower appears out of nowhere on a pillow next to me. I open the door, letting him know that this is non-negotiable. <laughs> you are so silly. Stepping out the front, stepping out the front is really an experience in its own right. Not only I, not only I no longer feel like a dirty secret, but the porch that greets me is a pleasant surprise. I gaze to the right and find a chair at the small table beside it. Immediately, I imagine how we could spend our future evenings here, simply unwinding. With days getting warmer, having a drink outside and watching the moon rise while listening to the chirping of crickets sounds almost dreamy, especially with how secluded and sheltered this location seems to be. I almost half expected there to be other houses nearby, but it turns out Rannick's cottage is literally on the outskirts of the village. I must, I must say, you do like your privacy. I look to the wolf as he steps outside. Who doesn't? He takes the lead and walks down the steps, extending his paw in a gentlemanly fashion. Here, Tiny, let me help you. I can manage, I mutter, playfully refusing to take his paw. I know his tricks. And me, immediately my feet wavers and I stumble, falling into the wolf's arms. <laughs> my face is buried inside his chest fluff as I gaze up awkwardly at his laughing muzzle. I've built this place, remember? The step is off level. I was meant to fix it, but never really had the time. He smirks coyly, and I think I just played right into his trap. I shake my head teasingly and push myself away. As so I take a few steps, I look around in slight confusion. Odd. Hmm? This place is quite secluded, but I could swear I saw the light outside the window and I heard talk and laughter. 
I stopped and looked back at him with determined expression. It was the very first night when you left me alone. Oh, yeah, we had sentries posted at the edge of the village. He points to a small clearing in the distance. They sometimes camp not far from here. How did you sneak me past them? Vol relieved them from duty. Can't question an alpha. Especially Vol. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Either way, it's a lovely spot. No wonder you built your house here. It is pretty all right. It is pretty all right. Oh, I'm sorry. It is pretty all right. But in all fairness, I have chosen it for a different reason. Oh? I smile as we walk out. As we walk arm in arm. It used to be a spot where I had picnics with my mother. Last time I saw her was right here. He points to his house, and I feel slightly saddened by the revelation. This place always made me feel safe, you know? Yeah. I smile awkwardly, knowing full well what he means. Safe haven is something everyone needs, no matter what form it takes. Knowing how truly dear this home is to him, I feel even safer in it than ever before. But, as comfortable as that sentiment is, a troubling thought occurs to me. He talks about his mother in past tense. What, what happened to her? I ask reluctantly. I don't know. The wolf shrugs, trying to sound indifferent, but a slight slump in his posture shows defeat. She was from another tribe. We meet, we mate, and that's it. The firstborn pup always stay with their fathers. What about the mothers? They get to keep the secondary litters. But kids need mothers, don't they? He stops, taking a deep breath and not regarding me. The birth mother stays only until the pup is waned. Then the tribe's den mother takes over. Either way, I was the lucky one. My mother remained a little while longer than appropriate. He mutters in a mix of resignation and mild frustration. It's clear he doesn't want to talk about this, but I have to know one more thing. When was the last time you saw her? I was maybe five or six. Honestly, I can barely remember her. I can hear a clear hint of longing in his voice, and it makes my heart sink. The way of life is truly horrifying, and it's not just only my bias. Renek's hurt is plain to see, but I decide to drop the issue. No point in opening old wounds I cannot heal. I mean, she sounds wonderful. I bet she would be proud of the wolf you've become. He throws me a shocked gaze and then smiles softly. For whatever reason, he places great stock in my comment, and despite how heavy the conversation got, his mood lifts immediately, cemented by his swagging tail. Yeah, I certainly hope so. I smile back, my admiration for him growing with each a day further than I expected possible. Despite how much hardship we had to go through, Rannick turned out turned out upstanding. Rannick turned out an upstanding, compassionate being. In fairness, any parent could be proud to call him their son. Ooh. Ooh, the village! We walk in silence for a while, slowly entering the village proper. As we're getting closer to other wolves, I decide to remain quiet and instead just take in the sights. The houses look rather simple. I wouldn't call them primitive, but they aren't elaborate either. I guess they serve their purpose, but it does feel as if we went back in time. However, despite it all, the old-timey aesthetic is actually heartwarming. On the whole, the village does look quite wholesome. Rannick! A brown, cheery wolf calls out from his doorway, stepping onto the path. Oh, wow! That's a big dude. Vither! So! This is the other kid you've saved during your during your big night. My, what a find. Mel comes closer, but Rennick's laid-back attitude allows me to remain calm despite the stranger being thrice my size. Let me have a look at you. His paw grabs my chin crudely, and he rotates my head in both directions as if inspecting livestock. Well, well, they are quite something, aren't they? Bit on the small side, though. The wolf snorts, causing Rennick to smile awkwardly. Yeah. Considering the legends, you'd expect them to be... Somewhat more intimidating. This one is rather disarming. I ignore the jabs. I got used to them by now. Kalen is my second name at this point. As he continues to inspect me, I myself decide to have a closer look at him. He's very well built, although he has a bit of a muscle gut. Oh, so a dad body. <laughs> I can see a scar on the right side of his abdomen. It's clearly an old stab wound, a mirror image of my very own. I wonder if mine will scar like that. It looks kind of hot. Eventually, he states his curiosity and turns back to face Rannick. By the way, I'm glad to know you can stand up for yourself. Hmm? You sent my little boy into the dirt like the silly puppy is. About time that fool learned his place. I almost throw a confused gaze to Rannick, but manage to rein myself in. Remember, you don't understand the Morian. 
Didn't mean to. We were just sparring. Rannick winces uncomfortably. <laughs> the bubbly male elbows him teasingly. <clears throat> Don't be coy with me. I'm sure you've enjoyed that little payback for the way he roughed you up. Ha <laughs> ha. It wasn't like that. Rennick continues his half-hearted protests, but the brown male pays him no mind. Ambushing one's alpha in their own den. Disgraceful. Wait, is he the father of one of the guards? Did Rannick, ru did Rannick roughen them up? Had he not been still licking his bruises, I'd give him a few of my own, making up, making to oil up his gears. They were only following orders. Oop. Gonna pause it right there, guys. Nope. Alright, Alarm Chain, we hear ya. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. That's been another episode of Far Beyond the World. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!